Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii. My guest today is Glenn Gabbard of Nature's High Tech Solutions. And we're going to talk about the fabulous topic of sewer. No, actually, we're going to talk about a little bit more than that. As you know, I'm a huge fan of Moore's Law, where in essence, technology is improving at a rate that we can barely keep up with. And the same goes for sewer technology. Well, it's a little more than sewer technology. Glenn Gabbard is the Hawaii rep for a new, a, a biotechnology that involves bacteria, which can clean up your water outfall lines, I believe, Glenn, all the way from little resi individual residences to major city sewer lines. Absolutely yeah. right. So thank you so much for being on, on the program today, because this is, well, how about that uh, collapse? I don't, there, there was a collapse in Kahala Mall of the, the line that wasn't a sewer line, though, I think that was a much bigger water line. Or, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. But up in my neighborhood, we've had a couple of sewer line uh, collapses. So this is, uh, and the reason we're having a very large bill on our water bill is not because we use the water, but because the Board of Water Supply has to ha put together this huge pot of money in order to keep our sewer lines and our water lines intact in now. They, they got a bit behind on their budget, and now they're playing uh, catch up in, in my uh, line. Very true. So why don't you uh, launch in and tell us what in the world these, I would call them, well, biobacteria. Biobacteria is a little <laughs> bit redundant. But these are bacteria with a very, very special uh, appetite. Absolutely. Well, yeah. it, it's, it's great to be on with you again, Howard. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, by way of introduction, uh, as you know, what we do at Gabbard Energy Group with any of our partners in Hawaii is we work to uh, be green, be sustainable, and to use the latest in technology. This particular biotechnology uh, that uh, my, my partners at Aqua Natural Solutions uh, practice is uh, a technology first that's been around for 40 years. Mm -hmm. It originally was developed to deal with petrochemical spills in the ocean. I, I remember those back then. Yeah, yes. This was the solution. Yeah. This was yeah. a solution. Mm -hmm. And as you were saying in your mm -hmm. introduction, that uh, basically what's been created is a good bacteria. Normally when you say to someone, well, I'm going to put some bacteria in your water or in your mm -hmm. pipes, mm -hmm. that's a scary thing. In this case, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, because what this bacteria does, first, in a climate like Hawaii, uh, it's been uh, specially cultured so that it adapts to whatever climate it's in, mm -hmm. which has been a problem sometimes in this biotechnology area when you're using this approach that uh, certain bacteria may not adapt to a given climate. This does. And then, very simply, the problem that we're dealing with on the residential or the commercial area is that um, in the grease traps, in your pipes, in your septic system, you get uh, grease, you get sludge, uh, you, as a result you have odors and quite frankly in some instances those odors could be harmful if they're not mm -hmm. neutralized. So very simply what this bacteria does, it's a good bacteria that is introduced into the pipes, into the septic system, into the waste uh, management treatment centers and literally the bacteria eats the sludge, eats the grease, and takes what could be uh, a harmful and certainly an offensive odor and turns it into harmless, odorless gas. And uh, for any particular facility, uh, whether it's a residential home or whether it's a wastewater treatment plant or whether it's a, a, a large hotel or commercial building, uh, what we do is we go in and we do a customized treatment proposal that occurs on an ongoing basis. Um, and the other thing that I would say is one of, the, uh, one of the things that's, aside from being environmentally friendly, that's a great advantage of this approach, 
is that it significantly reduces the operating cost mm -hmm. for dealing with this mm -hmm. issue because typically what is done is uh, a commercial building owner will bring in a plumbing company that will do a process I refer to as jet flushing mm -hmm. to try to get this sludge out of the pipes. Whereas this particular natural biotechnology is much less expensive. So there is an operating cost advantage uh, mm -hmm. to a municipality or a building owner and the like. Now let me try to give an analogy, see if it's right. And that is to our human circulatory system. We're always talking about clogged arteries yes. and doctors actually go in with stents, I think, and replace a, a overly clogged artery. So with your system, instead of doing that, we would be say eating the right thing or taking in the right foods which would naturally clear out those arteries and get them uh, good and young again is that a good analogy that's a great analogy mm -hmm. that's exactly right and that's that's really the purpose of the good bacteria and so it's an alternative treatment method to mm -hmm. use your analogy mm -hmm. that has been uh, very effective uh, i think you know one of the things we were talking about prior to the show is that there's 28 uh, municipal water districts in California alone that are using this process, mm -hmm. many mm -hmm. agricultural districts and the like. So the application is very broad. And just another analogy, what might be with uh, composting, where you take a whole bunch of solid green waste and you let the organisms work on that green waste and the pile goes down, 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 down and all you're left with is a handful of nutrients which can act, which are actually beneficial. You're absolutely right. Uh, this, uh, this process speeds the composting process mm -hmm. and uh, actually creates uh, a, a lot of rich beneficial biology mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, the, in the end compost, which in turn then, uh, when it's utilized, increases plant life and lessens the amount of chemicals that need to be used uh, in order to have the plants thrive. Uh, one of the other things that happens with this process with composting is it takes the, um, uh, the uh, pathogens, big word, mm -hmm. uh, that, that I had to look up too, that basically uh, is any organism that causes disease. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it, it removes those in the process as well as, as it relates to composting. My. Goodness, so you're starting in some cases with grease, which is, has a lot of hydrocarbon in it, or even petrochemicals, again, hydrocarbons. This is the stuff, the diesel fuel that we put in our truck tanks or whatever, mm -hmm. and you end up with a life-friendly or growing environment. So it breaks it down, breaks it down, probably to, to its original uh, molecules, I would imagine. Yes, yes. And so uh, there, there are great benefits, uh, uh, indirect benefits from the process as it relates to uh, composting. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I know we've got some slides. Do you think we're ready to Absolutely. Uh, bring them up? Then? Sure. Yeah. So wait, can you read that? Wastewater I, public health? I can, and I can kind of summarize it uh, <laughs> that very simply, and that is that um, what we're really talking about here, separate from what we've discussed on the biotechnology side, is that uh, this is really a public health issue. Mm -hmm. And I'll give one mm -hmm. simple example. Um, we have a, uh, a commercial building that we're meeting with here in Hawaii. And um, there not only is a waste management problem, but there is a odor problem. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about odors, odors, of course, can be offensive, but they also can be hazardous as mm -hmm, we know. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it's critical that um, pipelines, grease traps, septic lines, wastewater treatment plants um, are handled as environmentally efficiently and effectively as possible so that we protect the public health. And that's mm -hmm. really what we're saying, that you know, wastewater and public health, if wastewater isn't handled properly, in an environmentally sensitive way, public health is at risk. Ab absolutely, and just related to that, um, it was just a few months ago that a dairy farm wanted to set up a big operation on Kauai, 
so that Hawaii might become milk self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. And the neighbors objected and objected, and I think it was turned down because they had odor considerations. Could you just apply these bacteria to the, the cow manure and it would go down? Or? It's, a, it's a critical issue. For mm -hmm. instance, um, in, uh, in, uh, in California, and I'm thinking of Hawaii and the Big Island too, Harris Ranch is a huge facility. And that's one of the facilities that uh, uh, Brian Griggs and, and my partners at Aqua Natural work with, along with many agricultural districts, because the, the effective treatment of wastewater is a critical issue in terms of public health uh, for people that, that live around those agricultural areas. And, and the, again, the odor problem is addressed. Yes, yeah, the odor yeah. problem, and, and the odor problem is addressed again. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, as you deal with the waste problem, you deal with the odor problem at the same time, and you take whatever the issue is causing the odor, you neutralize it, and it becomes a harmless gas. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the solids become uh, good compost. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So you get, you get multiple mm -hmm. benefits in mm -hmm. the process. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, let's move on to our next slide here. Or cute little baby. Yes, and I was going to yes, say yes, pretty yes. pretty much saying the same thing that you know in this country you know the bottom line is as in every country uh, there's a lot of waste mm -hmm. and so the issue of effectively dealing with waste disposal whether you're dealing with commercial buildings whether you're dealing with municipal water districts waste treatment areas whether you're dealing with agricultural districts whether you're dealing with residential homes is huge. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more effectively we can deal with it, the more environmentally we can deal with it, um, the more cost effectively we can deal with it, then uh, the less the problem. Well, that gives us a really good overview. Why don't we take our break now and then come back and get into some real uh, nit nitty gritty with bacteria and sludge. This is Howard Wig, Code Green. Glenn Gabbard is my guest today. Back in a moment. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday here on Big Tech Hawaii. Aloha! How you doing? Welcome to Ibachi Talk. I'm here, Gordo the Tech Star on Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Aloha. Good to, have you, good, to, good to have Andrew here in the house. Please join us every Friday from 1 to 1.30 and follow us up on YouTube. And remember, as we say at the end of every show, how, how you, you doing? doing? Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter, and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to figure out how we're going to work towards a clean and renewable energy future. We have exciting conversations with all kinds of stakeholders, everyone who needs to come together to talk about renewable energy, be they engineers, advocates, lawyers, utility executives, musicians, or artists, to see how we can come together to make a renewable future, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green, Glenn Gabbard of Gabbard Consortium, is it? Uh, Gabbard Energy Group. Gabbard yes. Energy Group is my guest, and we are talking sludge, but not <laughs> just any sludge. We're talking sludge that, when mixed with biotechnology, i.e., the proper bacteria, we are converting these sometimes hazardous projects and or products and certainly disruptive products, i.e. grease in sewer lines or grease in your own uh, residential line and converting them to good viable stuff like compost and we're eliminating odors. So Glenn, we're, we covered just the general ground. What, uh, why don't we look at the next slide and pro proceed from there? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this is just uh, some quick historical background. I mentioned earlier that originally this technology was developed to deal with um, the, the petrochemical spills mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. issues in the ocean. And so uh, in the process of doing that uh, and the work in the laboratories developing this good bacteria, uh, all of a sudden the applications that we're talking about, mm -hmm. the expanded applications, were really discovered. And so that's why I think the key thing here is that 
This is a biotechnology that has been proven and around for 40 years. This is not something that we're doing beta tests with. This is something that uh, is, is growing in its application, but like so much else that we do in the green energy efficiency area, mm -hmm. it's an educational process. And it's a matter of uh, here in Hawaii, as with uh, every other area that we work in, we're working to you know, reach out to the different areas that, that are all dealing with the same issue of waste management treatment. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you can go all the way from teeny little residential pipes all the way to sewage treatment plants. And that's something that we in Honolulu have been very concerned with is the conversion of what was hazardous waste and way back when it just used to be dropped out into the sea yes uh, now we are recycling water at the Honolulu Uli plant and there's talk of recycling water at the sand island uh, treatment plant have you been in contact with the city at all about that or we are we're uh, we're meeting with the uh, Honolulu water district mm -hmm. as a starting point and uh, we've also um, been, been working with others that have actually been consulting and working in Hawaii for the past 10, 15 years. Um, and so we're very interested in, um, in, in, in trying to positively impact as many of the districts as possible. But you know, as you were saying, when you talk about uh, the waste treatment plants, what it really comes down to is um, with this kind of process, you've got to maintain the flow in the collection systems. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things you're dealing with. Secondly, um, uh, in the lift and the, uh, and the pumping stations, you need to make sure that, again, you keep them clear so that they operate um, effectively. And uh, at the same time, uh, the, uh, the, the wastewater issue, to address that, that typically in the water districts, the, the waste management districts that we work with, um, the goal is to uh, treat the water so that it becomes potable. Mm, potable. potable water, uh, as you know, can then be used for crops. It can also be used by cities and municipality for, uh, ir for irrigation, for mm -hmm. watering mm -hmm. of uh, parks and uh, different area. Uh, and so um, once again, in terms of conserving water, as yeah. well as being environmentally sound, the end result of an effective uh, treatment process that's environmentally sound with a wastewater treatment plant is that all of a sudden we get more use mm -hmm. from that mm -hmm. particular water in ways that benefit the entire community and every one of the islands. Now, as I understand it, the Honu, Honu Uli, Uli, Uli plant out in the uh, Campbell area, wastewater plant, does process its water and then diverts the potable water off to, I know, golf courses, maybe agricultural areas. Yes. And at the outlet, there's a little uh, sign saying, do, do not drink this water, because it hasn't been super refined to that level, but it's that's perfectly right. fine for applications like uh, golf courses. That's exactly right. And that's mm -hmm. a, the perfect example of how, when, when treated properly, you can um, reutilize this water for the benefit of the community. Mm -hmm. Well, I know we've got some more slides and we don't sure. have all the time in the world. Indeed. Yeah. Um, I think this particular slide talks about the, the, um, the pros and cons of bacteria versus enzymes. And clearly, as, as anyone listening to this show can see, that we've been talking about the, the, the good bacteria approach in terms of doing this. So without uh, uh, not being a, a chemist and without getting too technical, I can simply say that you know that's really uh, the the science of bio augmentation is really what we're talking about in this good bacteria biotechnology. Well, let, let me intervene and point to our own human bodies. <clears throat> I think I have some of my zeros mixed up, but we've got something like 10 billion cells in our body, which contain a hundred billion atoms. And the bacteria in our body <clears throat> is lodged in all of that so that we have one trillion bacteria. So all we are, we think we're these <laughs> handsome creatures, but we're just a huge hotel for bacteria. Yes. And almost all the bacteria is beneficial. If it wasn't beneficial, we wouldn't be on this planet. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Good point. 
So just a little time left. Why don't we go to a next slide here? Um, this talks about kind of a, and there's a, there's a picture that shows kind of a before mm -hmm. and after. But uh, as I mentioned before, uh, whether it's a commercial building owner, a, a, a hotel, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, water treatment district, an agricultural district, um, the approach is always the same in the sense that um, we take a look at the severity of the waste management issue. We uh, come up with a particular treatment plan on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. We modify that as necessary. And the results are pretty dramatic. And this particular uh, slide that we had up before shows the kind of the before and after yeah. uh, effect of uh, this kind of uh, biotechnology, the, the good bacteria. Um, and, and Why don't you describe the, the top versus the bottom? I don't know that it's all I was going to say that yeah. the, the top yeah. is kind of is what we inherited mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, you know, dealing, dealing with uh, the kind of uh, sludge and, and grease and oil and all that that you're dealing with in your pipes. And uh, the bottom slide shows the difference after, uh, after a series of treatments. Uh, yeah. within there. Just, just to do the artery analogy again, if your artery looked like that top slide, your heart would just be pumping like mad trying to get any blood through. But on the bottom slide, it would uh, heart would just be cruising along and you'd be healthy as anything. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I'll, uh, uh, I'll mention another application that's pretty straightforward. Um, uh, most people know the name Outback Steakhouse, which mm -hmm. is one of the one of the uh, the groups that we work with. Um, every restaurant in Hawaii, like any other restaurant outside of Hawaii, is dealing with their grease trap, mm -hmm. and they're dealing with their their uh, uh, trying to again keep down odor and uh, remove that grease in an environmental way, uh, and they're dealing typically again with a monthly plumbing bill, mm -hmm. <coughs> jet flushing, <coughs> pardon me, and um, this is an alternative. This is a cost-efficient, environmentally safe alternative for it. Uh, and you think about the impact if you had, you know, any number of restaurants uh, uh, adopting this and tremendous positive benefit there uh, all the way around. Absolutely. I, I threw a big party not long ago and there was a barbecue there and I had a barbecue guy and he was barbecuing like mad. And it was up to me the next morning to <laughs> try to clean this thing. And I had my own little mini grease <laughs> dilemma. What in the world do I do with all this stuff? Yeah. You're, you're right, I've yeah. been there. And that, mm -hmm. is a, that, is a, that is a great example of yeah. what a restaurant or any mm -hmm. other commercial facility deals with on a daily basis mm -hmm. in terms of uh, this particular issue. Yeah, yeah. M multiply my situation by 100 or 500 in a, in a big restaurant and you've got a problem. You've got to do something with this grease. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So we have one or two more slides. I know we're getting, well, we're, we've got some, some time here. Applications, yes. This is, and we've been talking about this throughout the show, but this is really just a summary. Uh, and, and really, I think for our purposes, probably a, a good, a good uh, uh, ending visual here in terms of just the different applications of this process. But as we've talked about before, and you think about Hawaii uh, in all the islands, that uh, with all the restaurants, with all the hotels, with all the commercial buildings, with all the condominiums, the agricultural districts and the mm -hmm. water treatment districts. Um, the application applies to any one of those particular areas. And uh, while the treatment may differ, the benefits are the same, as we've talked about in terms of um, uh, compost, in terms of being able to reuse water effectively in an environmentally responsible manner, um, in terms of <laughs> guest comfort uh, mm -hmm. at a restaurant or a hotel and the elimination of, uh, of odors uh, and any other issue that might uh, come up from it. Well, you know, the, the governor and many other of our community leaders keep talking about making Hawaii more friendly to agriculture, and that includes raising animals, cows, chickens, whatever, Yes. and they tend to have a residue, and the residue tends to be offensive and problematic and maybe expensive to dispose of whereas i'm kind of saying maybe not you but a farmer just 
what, what would you do to scatter these bacteria over manure piles or something more uh, I, scientific than that? I was going to say yeah. it's it's okay. definitely it's an issue that always needs to be addressed, mm -hmm. and that uh, the work with agricultural districts. Uh, is a huge is a huge well, and, you're, and important. You're doing area. a lot of work in California. A lot of work yeah, in California yeah, yeah. with the agricultural districts, with uh, processing plants, with uh, with waste treatment uh, mm -hmm, facilities mm -hmm. uh, throughout the state. And uh, uh, I know that uh, uh, Brian Griggs spent all last week in the state of Washington for the same reason. Mm -hmm, it was nothing mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, municipal wastewater districts and agricultural districts. Yeah. So big need. Big need and. I like to say that the current wars are being fought over oil, the future wars will be fought over water, and this sounds like just a really, really good way of taking what would be wastewater, even hazardous water, and converting it back, maybe not to water that you and I would want to drink, but we use a heck of a lot more water for agricultural purposes Absolutely. than we do for, for drinking or, or human purposes. Absolutely right, and this process gets it to that potable water stage, mm -hmm. which for those purposes is environmentally safe and completely appropriate. Mm -hmm. So are you stationed here? Is this your home, or do you travel back and forth? I, I uh, go back and forth between mm -hmm. California in the Sacramento area and Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And um, as I say, uh, I do it for two reasons. One, uh, the love of both areas. And secondly, the two states that are most uh, progressive when mm -hmm. it comes to energy efficiency, sustainability, mm -hmm. green approaches, California and Hawaii. So I consider myself a very blessed person in doing mm -hmm. what we do. Well, that brings us to a close. Thank you so much, Gwen Gabbard. This is, you know, we hear about products like this, old products, ancient products, mm -hmm. and give, gives us hope because we are facing so many environmental problems, but boom, here come the solutions like this. Absolutely. Always great to see you, Howard, and uh, uh, we look forward to helping any way we can. So this is Howard Wig, Code Green with Glenn Gabbard. Thank you very much, and see you next time.